Okay, so this is going to be a lesson on the physics constraint. Uh, this is a very important lesson about the uh, ratio of masses in um, on of the objects that are uh, linked to the physics constraint. So let me show you something. Have you ever had this happen? Well, if you have then I'll show you why that happens. So I have a small scene here with some examples and we're gonna go through them one by one. So let's let's go to the very simple case of uh, just two objects connected with the physics constraint. So the, uh, the lesson here is it's very simple. Each uh, force of, uh, that is applied by the physics constraint on uh, the object uh, that it's connected to is it's going to be scaled by the mass of the object. So here we can uh, uh, we can uh, imagine there are two forces pulling these cubes together. So one from here to the center and the other one from here to the center. And um, these forces are going to pull uh, on each other, and they're going to be scaled. Uh, by their masses. So here it's the pull of the forces is going to be um, uh, proportional to the mass uh, they are connected to. So let's just see how this happens. This, this works. So as you can see here, these objects, as you can see, they're locked. So I have um, here their mass, it's 1x each. So I, I, I put an X because uh, it doesn't matter um, their actual mass. What it matters is the ratio between these masses. So here they have one kilo and one kilo, right? So if we look here, mass one is one kilo, right? And the other one is also one kilo. Okay, so here we have the ideal setup of uh, uh, the ratio of masses. So this is this is the best situation you could have for the stability of this physics constraint, right? So this is what you would want for any object uh, that you would have linked um, with physics constraints. But of course, you can't do that all the time because you have uh, different objects and setups. So what you will try to do is have this ratio as little as possible. So let's see. Um, so let's see what happens now if we have a different ratio. So this is one to one, right? So let me just show you what I have here. So as you can see, that it's marked locked because if you look in the um, and the setup of this, the physics constraint is actually locked on every axis of linear limits and angular is just locked. Okay, but as you might remember, is that physics constraint always uses forces to same place. So when it's locked like this, it uses um, uh, restitution forces to bring the forces together. So they're more violent like the as uh, opposed to the forces of the angular motor. Okay. So here if we can we can actually manipulate this with no problem and they don't disconnect, right? Because this is what happens. Usually they disconnect when they come towards each other. So let's see so this is one to one ma mass ratio. So let's see if we have this the other way around. So this is, as you can see, I have this has 100 kilos and this is one kilo. And the same thing, they're locked here. So if we play now, we have this situation and the other. So let's see what happens. So you can see here, the one on the left has no problem at all. And that is because the small uh, mass is on the top and the big mass is on the bottom. So the small mass doesn't actually uh, affect the other one. But this situation right here, when we have the, the mass on the top that it's a hundred times 
more than the mass on the bottom what it does is actually um, because the ratio is a hundred times more than uh, one to one it actually pushes uh, into this the force on the bottom and on the bottom we have uh, the floor which is immobile uh, it actually doesn't it actually doesn't simulate physics that's the important thing so if it doesn't simulate physics it's going to be considered to have infinite mass so you have uh, an object with a hundred kilos pushing onto an object with one kilo to uh, against uh, an object with an infinite mass so what it's going to give way it's actually the connection that the one kilo object has to the 100 kilo object so yeah so the fix here is to bring this uh, this mass up now of course in the real world we would uh, and actually it wouldn't function like that because objects in the real world if you would have this force right here it would either be like a spring or like a metal rod here in this case so uh, either the metal rod will actually bend or something or the boxes themselves would bend so but because in the engine the objects are not uh, bendable they're rigid objects like this one they have to give way so either the the physics constraint gives way or the, the the objects penetrate each other so as you can see here if you look closely the uh, this object penetrates this the ground and it's pushed back so actually what happens is that the force that wants to keep this object to this distance from the physics constraint fights the force the ejection force that the ground is using to push this object out of it so if you look again the object penetrates the ground really quickly and then it's pushed back so yeah sometimes you can have like um, uh, momentary um, equilibrium like you had it there but usually you don't right so what we could do here as we can go here and then try to raise this mass a bit so let's so it's a hundred times more so let's see now we have this small mass right this one let's put it's a 10 let's put this to uh it's a one sorry let's put this to 10 so this should already well i won't change the text here but well no because we just changed it so as you can see it's already stabilized right now if we try to push this away or in, and actually have um, an interaction that it's uh it's got more of a punch then of course it will give way a little bit but i mean it does look quite stable now right so yeah that's really a quick fix okay so let's get this back to one we had before okay let's try this again yeah so as you can see comes back to the original uh, um, um, to the original behavior okay so this uh, works on either the linear limits and the the radial limits so uh, or the angular actually so you can see here it's the same thing as here only i've i've, I've uh, limited it so it, it doesn't rotate like this so it's actually this tries to go on the ground and pushes this one so as you can see it gives away right here so it creates this uh distance right and this one if you look at it closely it actually penetrates into here right here it actually penetrates into this uh, immobile object okay so let's go over here so here i've got a setup with three objects 
and uh, two physics constraint they are also locked so you can see here I have a like a hundred times mass one and one so let's see what happens okay so if you look closely this one doesn't give way but this one does and it actually if you look at the uh, if you look at the um, offset actually it's a lot more than the offset that we had here right so here it just offset a bit and tries to push it, push it really uh, fast back into the position but here actually it, it is just uh, it's a lot slower right so this is because the physics constraints are um, 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 chained together so it's probably this one the top one and the middle one are kind of considered together and their mass in uh, it's uh, <coughs> together it's considered to be pushing on this one right so that's why we get this uh, uh, behavior weird behavior right so of course we would want to get this uh, mass up but what we see will see happen is actually let's see we have here uh, yeah let's get this uh, mass up okay so just just a second so if you look at this it's the same thing but it's inverted here so with the mass the the hundred times math on the bottom so you can see there's actually absolutely no problem and then it works perfectly right so you just pull this up absolutely no problem yeah so let's try to make this uh do i have this yeah we have we actually have this here right <coughs> yeah so what I wanted to do is change this, so we put this up uh, 200x, but we just had it here. So as you can see, we have like 500x, 1x, 500x. That's 500 kilos, 1 kilo, 500 kilos. So what you would expect here is to put this mass to 100x, like we had here, and just it's stable, but it doesn't work like that exactly. So if we look here. As you see, is that this mass and this mass will kind of like group together, so they kind of be considered as one single mass, and it's going to push onto this one. But because this one is small, then its its connection to this one it's going to be um, uh, flaky, like here. So it just it just gives way, right? Because now we have. 101x pushing on 500x bit because but because this connection it's connected to 1x then it's just gonna give way so um yeah that's uh we'll see later about the uh, the ropes so this is why ropes uh, are not uh stable but yeah so of course to fix this you have to take this one in the middle actually make it something like uh, 50 maybe to be te uh, 10 times lower than this one uh, let's see now of course this uh, all the the, uh, the changes that i'm uh, gonna show you actually that i'm showing you actually affect a bit the the gameplay but you will have to uh, you have to make with it um, you know just accept it because uh, there's no other way so okay so let's take this one and put this one to 50 so I think that should do it right let's see this again yeah so it's stable as you can see here I should put on this one yeah okay uh, so let's just put this back okay so yeah same thing here we have just a small mass here just for just examples right so as you can see because this one is so small it actually penetrates the ground and eventually uh, sometimes it just passes through so this yeah it just stays there right so it passes through the ground now it's through and it's here 
so same thing on the horizontal if we have small masses here connected to a big mass it's just gonna pull on them and they're gonna penetrate the ground a little bit as you can see here like this so again just increase these masses so as you can see there's a tear here right okay so just let's go back a bit on the uh, this and let's just with uh, let's just see what happens so this what we discuss here is only the physics constraints themselves but uh, this the rules that I've showed you actually um, um, apply to when the physics constrained objects interact with other objects right so let's see we have a hundred X mass here let's see what happens if we put this on top right let me just align this a bit yeah I think that's it's okay right yeah so as you can see this mass um, let's just put it like this penetrates into this one and uh, so in this in this case the the mass right here it uh, tries to apply so okay so we have the ground that is have ins infinite mass uh, transmits a force upward of resistance right and it meets the force from here that has one x and so what what happens is the hundred times uh, egg, uh, kilo object penetrates into this one because this object doesn't have enough force to push it upwards right so um, yeah this is it can give way either here or here or here so I don't know exactly which point this happens but just if we go here and just modify this so no let's just let's just use this it's the same thing we don't right so let's say that we take the mass on the top and make it a hundred times so it's just like here it would be this case right let's see what happens now so as you can see actually uh, what happens is that um, well first of all we had the, 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 the case that we have a 400 times x uh, 100 times uh, versus one time then it's gonna just push on this one and try to push it into the ground right so um, unless just I think this is not really good example I'll just put it away because we, we need something stable uh, actually this is this is okay yeah so this is not stable enough but let's make it stable right so let's go here I'm just going to try to edit from here big mass small mass let's put the small mass to 10 right so it's stable right so now it's going to be stable that's good okay so this is more, not 1x is 10x but, uh, let's see so if you pick this one up again and put it here then let's see let's drop this one right so we don't quite see it here but oh well, actually let's let's put this push this into the ground right so what will happen as you can see it's kind of like these masses together form one single mass so the small mass would give way right okay so if we have the other way around like this one we have the small mass on top uh, if we play now as you can see it's very stable no problem right uh, if we put this one on top then As you can see, this one is going to pe penetrate into this one. 
and and it's this part of the physics constraint that will give way because it's attached to the smaller mass right so i think that's clear right see if we have another example no that's it for this one now let's go to the yeah so here we have so I've given an example with the with the locked constraints. So if we have constraints, soft constraints like this one, let's see here, uh, physics constraints. Let's see how I set it up. Yeah. So they're limited to zero, so they cannot move, or uh, except uh, just stay in place. But they are soft constraint. Let me see. Yeah, so I've put the rotation, the angular limits to soft, so that means they are bendy, right? Like this. So if we go, let's go, let's go back to this. Uh, let me see here. Um, this should be, this should be soft. Like this one here should be soft also, right? Uh, Stiffness, let's put 50 like with the. So we don't care about the settings actually. I'm, uh, maybe I might, like, um, I'll probably make a tutorial about how to set this up if you want to be stable. But it doesn't actually have to do with the mass. Well, not a lot. Yeah, so what I wanted to show here is that the soft constraints actually function the same in the same manner, right? just they give way here right but they are more stable that is because um, the force that it, it, it's used to put them in place actually it's less violent than the other one right so if you go back here so we have the root the angular uh, constraint so as you can see it tries to bend it and then it penetrates and then you, you have the rejection force from here that pushes it violently right so this destabilizes it right so i've got to mention if we have two objects like this and we're trying to pull from this one to pull this the the, sm the, the big object using from the small object like this so as you can see if we try to pull it up upwards it really doesn't move almost at all right and it's because the force gets scaled by the, the the ratio of the masses right so it's just it's one to a hundred so it's not a lot so we we'll have to yank it really hard so it so it moves right as you can see here on the other hand if we have this one and we just grab the, the big mass it just just really easily i can pick it up easily right like this just no problem okay so let's see it's a special case like this one uh, and then I'll go to the interesting one with the car right okay so same principle here so here I've got uh, a thousand so this is a ton a thousand kilo object that it's pushing on this rope so you think like really how does this rope not give way so this rope has 30 segments uh, let me show this the collision right so you can see the segments right so this quite a lot of segments put together right so this rope should be unstable I think uh, you have experienced this oh I give away but it it's not and that is because of the masses that each segment has right so if you look have the physics asset here let me just hide this and we just want to show the bodies right this one and uh, hide bones right we just select this everything so if you look here, each segment has 15 kilos, right? So that means it's um, uh, 
it's 450 kilos altogether. So it's quite a mess, right? So if you want to destabilize it and make this pass through, uh, let's see. Now, it, now it's actually stable, right? Okay, cool. So if you go ahead and put this to one kilo each, then it should pass through without any problems. As you can see here, yeah, that is because this really big mass is pushing on these small masses and it penetrates them and they don't have enough force because their force is scaled by their mass. When they put push up, so it just penetrates them a little bit and then just pass it through, right? Okay. So, yeah, as we go this with this up, I also uh, I'll show you the setup of the rope also. So let's put this to 20. So it should be a lot more stable now. Yeah. So as you can see, it does penetrate them a little bit, but it just. Ah, yeah. Well, that is because I'm recording and there's a lot of. Actually, there's. There's a lot of uh, physics constraints here. I think there's a. Uh, well, these ropes have 30. So there's four ropes. So there's a 120 physics constraint, and plus the other ones, I think we'll reach 150. There's a lot of constraints, so it's normal that it does give way eventually. Let me show you the, the FPS, by the way. So, yeah. The lower the FPS are, the, the more stable uh, they're going to be. Okay, so let's see this one here. So this has... This is a different setup from the vertical and that is because it's the subject is pushing in the middle. So these points are actually taking some of the load each but here we just have two points like this and you see what happens so this is what you get usually when it's unstable right i'm going to show show you why because i've tweaked the masses of these but this so as you can see it's 15x and 100x here that it's so this is uh, use a physics constraint to constrain it from here yeah just give the bone right um, <coughs> so this works quite well <coughs> let me show you how I'm doing the so the masses are well I use 20 kilos now I change this is actually the same thing as here so let me show you the physics constraint, right? Physics constraint. I'll just select them all. So what I've done here is I've actually just locked them from for the linear limits and just angular limits. I've put something like a um, soft constraint. Right? It doesn't it doesn't matter. So the the, the what what the elongation of the rope is, is actually the linear limits that count. These are just how it bends, right? So now they're locked, right? So if we go here and uh, yeah, so I showed you the setup. If we go here and just put them back to one, let's say, uh, just like this, it becomes jittery, right? So the forces of this physics constraint just try to keep the elements together, but they don't manage to do that. So again, when you make a rope, if you want it to be stable, go as high as you can, right? But of course you cannot go very high because what it hap will happen is, is that these segments will actually act as eventually as really big objects. So then they will uh when you uh push other they will push other objects away so it will depend on your game right so here what i wanted to show you as this is a tweaked 
Because you see, it's the same skeletal mesh, but it's a different physics asset. It's this one with tweaked masses. So what I've done here, as if you look, I just show the bodies, because these have the mass, right? So if you look here, we have 14 kilos, then 13.5, then 13, then 12.5, and so on. Right, so they decrease as they go down. So here we, we have uh, we have two setups with the, the same gradient of masses. One it's the big mass is here and the small mass is here, and the other way, if you look, it's the other way around. You have the the origin here, right? So it's big mass is here, small mass is here, right? So if you look, they actually. So this is 1x, right? Same thing. So if you look, we actually have different uh, behavior. Now, I don't know why exactly, but what I've, what I've um, seen is that... <clears throat> so if you're planning of having, for example, let's say, um, physics character or physics something tied to the rope, I think the best thing to do is have the the mass is equal, like this one, because this is the most stable one. This one just elongates, right? And this one just really not stable, right? So have them uh, equal, I would say. He let's say here in this case, you could have maybe have this be uh, heavier and this, these be lighter or something, but even so, because they they go into contact with the one ton uh, mass so yeah I would go for the the ones that are equal so as you can see here like this one is very stable right uh, it doesn't count here because I'm doing a lot of the, 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 the frames per second drop but you get the idea so that's it for the ropes let's go to the car so same thing here you just have a car with which weighs a ton like a thousand kilos and the the, uh, the wheels have one kilo right so if you, if you play this we've seen it before they just like go crazy right and just remember that these so let's see the setup here right so wait it's just a simple physics constraint it's the same thing i'm not gonna select them all they have the same option so there's just locked like except the rotation around the y-axis they're locked right so they should be solid right just, uh, they should stay in place without anything so what you do for this is you do this you try to get the ratio between the two masses as low as possible so as to not affect too much your gameplay right so here we have 100x instead of te uh, of uh, 1000 right so as you can see it's a lot less wobbly right uh, this is of course because I'm doing a lot of stuff a lot of operations so if you really want to get this to be stable really stable right then you would do something like the the, the the wheels, you just select the wheels like this and put them to 10, right? So then you would have just 10, 10x of ratio between them. So let's try this again. So as you can see, they're really stable now, right? Yeah. So now you would think this is like, okay, cool. With fixed everything right but the problem is that we arrive in this situation right so let's say this is 100x it's uh, I actually this is the same thing and we actually modified it let me show you here this is the same asset and let's see the wheels uh, no, no. like this right so we'd have them at 10 now, right? So so they're stable because we've seen them here. 
Now let's see what happens if we put a hundred, well, a uh, uh, thousand kilo on their back. And so you can see that. Uh, so yeah, problem. And suddenly they're not stable anymore, right? So um, yeah, this this is a problem. So the answer for this is that there is no actually there is no um, predefined answer. So in your game you would have let's say you have a car, right? So it's gonna interact with objects. So maybe you uh, will have a character or something on the car. So you will have to two choices: either when an object it's going on top of the car to tweak the mass of the car right to get it up if it's a really um, really uh, heavy object or um, you could um, well actually I think why well, yeah we just I think that's it you could, this, is, this is the only option oh yeah well you can you can actually decrease the mass of this one right so depending on how your objects interact with the scene and if this one is hitting other objects or this one is hitting other objects you would have to somehow get the ratio of this mass in relation to this one as close as possible right so uh, yeah these are really <coughs> the solution that you can employ to make this work right there is one there are other solutions but it involves either sub-stepping or um, trying to get a higher frame rate but those are <coughs> sorry about that those are actually separate subjects so I'm probably gonna make videos on those also so it's just um, by tweaking masses it's the most the easiest way to fix this that I've found right so um, yeah oh yeah there's one other thing yeah you could use also um, yeah but this uh, I'm, I'm gonna cover this in another yeah, I'm gonna cover this in another video I think so you could also use damping if you have just quickly I'm gonna show you here uh, just damping right so you have a diff different linear damping and angular just get this up let's say one or ten or something ah uh, well not ten of course yeah too much uh yeah by the way for for the rope this actually works very well and this is how i've done it here and there it's so stable uh i've showed you in the other video for the rope um uh, yeah you put damping on each element and it just stabilized the rope really well so let's put this to one so as you can see it does do a better job it's not crazy good but yeah so uh, here let's implement this let's implement the f so we would have the best thing to do is we have the wheels right um, here so we have 10 for the wheels this is not good because uh, this weight will end up kind of like summing with this one and it's gonna act on this a lot so we'll get this to if we can we could go like the best way just have a hundred like just one to one here and then it's so let's see as you can see now it's really stable right really stable well not perfect but because I'm recording so yeah that's what you do and if you can just get this one up 
2000 maybe I think it's just it's even more stable now I think well we just play around with these <coughs> so yeah that's the lesson about the masses I hope this has been useful I uh, plan on making these type of lessons about the physics constraint um, and a, f a few more because there's really no documentation on this and no demos, no nothing. So I think these are going to be really useful. Okay, so that's it for this video. Bye bye.